think I am. Hello. Let me get situated. Oh. There we go. All right. What's going on, people? <laughs> I've been wanting to go live, but I've been so busy. And then I started to get a lot of messages on my phone yesterday. And I was like, who's all these people messaging me? And um, and I had forgotten that I had that uh, video in the chamber. Let me see if I can fix this. Hey, who's over there? I forgot that I had a video schedule to come on yesterday because I had filmed it like a few weeks ago. Hey, Prince Mega. And uh, let me get on my other phone so I can see the comments at the same time. But uh, yeah, so I was like, all right, well, I guess I can try to, what up? I guess I could try to go live today since um, people were, um, had a lot to say. <laughs> it's crazy because um, my last video, I didn't really want to. I like, never want to be negative, you know, but um, but then you don't want to mislead people either. So I was like, I wish, you know, we want people to tell us the truth, but we have to be able to handle the truth. And, you know, my truth is different from other people's, but at least I felt the need to, hey, I dream of black queens. How are you? Um, welcome, welcome to the village. Um, I just got home from, uh, I guess you'd call it a play date. It was a family play date, actually. Um, made some friends from the States. Well, one Senegalese, but lived in the States um, for a long, long time. And then, you're welcome. And then um, another one, the wife, she's from South America, but she grew up in New York half her life, too. So it was like, cool. Got to speak some Spanish and uh, English, French, well, of all all languages together. Um, but uh, let me find myself on my phone. I'm gonna look at the comments on here so I can actually talk to people and stuff. But yeah, oh, I forgot I have my notes on my other phone. Maybe I'll remember them. I mean, I don't really take notes, but I didn't want to forget stuff because I kept commenting on the last video if you haven't seen it um i was talking about issues that some people are having and um you know i feel like some people may want to look into because it's a i guess you could say a movement or a fad or a trend or all the above you know people are into africa now which i think is great however um you know i had to build up to coming here, like I had to go to, you know, Hawaii first, and Texas, and then Puerto Rico, and then Panama, like I think I went, my travel, the way I did it, like coming here was intimidating to come visit. And uh, so I, I think seeing other cultures and stuff kind of helps because Africa is way different. I think Africa and Asia, um, if you're from the US and not familiar with those, it can be, there can be a lot of culture shocks because um, the the effects of colonialism didn't affect here the same way that they did in the Americas, the Caribbean, and um, you know, so in Asia, I don't think Asia was affected like that either. So I think the cultures are, um, um, it's a big shift. So, and then there's not much that we know about that we learn about, unless you grow up in an area where there's lots of people from Africa, you know, in some parts of the states there are, but where I'm from, you go to school, people whose parents are from Nigeria maybe, or Ethiopia, but the kids you would never know, like by knowing them, you don't really get exposure to the culture because everybody's just from there. But, um, so if you don't have the exposure, it can be hard. Hold on, I'm just looking for my, I wish I had my notes, but they're on the phone that I'm recording on. I forgot. 
But anyway, it's okay. How is everybody doing? Some of the comments are coming up, but I don't see all of them. One second. Here I am. Okay. All right, now I can see. Let me just turn this on. Okay. There we go. All right. So I just wanted to kind of, I guess, piggyback a little. I've been reading the comments and um, commenting on them. People have had some good things to say some thought-provoking things and um you know i debate back and forth like there's people who hey wendy city gina there's people who um wonder how my life is going here family members co-workers former co-workers um friends and stuff like that so i always try to because people have even if they don't say it like, you know that they're low-key afraid. What's up, Brenda? How are you? Even though um, they don't tell you, they're, like, afraid of um, the unknown. And so, because Africa is so unknown to, to a lot of people or a lot of us, you know, there's this, like, oh, my gosh, how are you going to deal with this? Or what's it like? And so I don't like to play into people's fears and... You know, if I say one thing, like if I'm if I if I'm depressed or if I say I'm going through something or we got scammed or you know, we had problems with our shipments and things like that, people I guess I feel I fear that people would like take that and run with it because there's already so many negative things uh out there about Africa as a whole and people are, are hesitant to come. You know, and a lot of people that live here from abroad, like, you know, their families may not want to come. Like, you have to get a lot of shots and is there toilet paper and things. And so I'm very wary. And I think a lot of us uh, repack people are, at least the ones, the friends that I have, uh, of telling people everything that's going on. And I think the same thing happens maybe for Continentals or anybody who migrates to the West from the Americas or other places. Hi! It's the joke sins. I have to finish watching your your live, guys. I I had to step away, but um, I gotta finish watching because I want to know the three things that you guys like and don't like. That was that sounds really interesting. But um, anyway, so like saying any negative things has repercussions for me, uh, twofold or three even threefold because I have family from here, and you know my husband is from here. And, you know, we have friends from here that live in the States. And so you don't want to say anything negative about someone else's country when you're an outsider. At least I don't. Some people don't have a problem with that. But I'm sensitive to that, you know, because if somebody talks about my tribe, I'm like, you know, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to educate yourself first. And, you know, so I'm trying to be very tactful and... Um, but I just got to have gotten to a point where people were complaining and saying things that were insensitive to my husband's culture and his country. And, but at the same time, you know, asking us for help with their issues and, you know, kind of um, venting to us. And it's like when people ask me for help, usually they mean him. So it's like. You know, you're talking about the people as if, like, they or these or, and, and it just reminds me of how certain people talk about us back where we're from, which I don't think is cool. And, um, you know, it's one thing to vent, and I think that, I, like, I had to actually block somebody who was in the comments because... I, and I never had to block anybody before. But usually people say things I just, I feel sorry for angry people and I feel sorry for hurt people and you know. But I didn't wanna, me telling my truth was not in any way an attempt to, you know, say something bad about 
the country or or the um, the continent. It was only because I didn't want people to be misled and keep coming because we're showing like that we're clubbing and we're doing this and we're doing that. Like Instagram and and YouTube is not a place for us to talk about our real problems. But I think that we need a place to do it, you know. But like nobody wants your family back home to worry about you. One, you know. And then they'll be talking and spreading and people and people only remember the negative things. It's like if you're in a relationship, they tell you, you know, don't tell your family that you had a spat or you guys had a fight or that somebody did something because you may forgive the person, but they, your family might be like, hey, you did that to my sister or you, you know. And so it's like certain things you keep to yourself, but then it's like you get to a point where you're suffering in silence. And so I think, I don't know if the people who, the few people that were commenting, like, go back to America and stuff. And it's like, I wasn't even saying <laughs> I wanted to go leave here. I was just saying that people, it's not easy. And so, you know, some of the comments were like, oh, you know, other other immigrant communities do it. Why can't African Americans? Which I thought was just a mean thing to say. Not everybody's the same, number one. And yes, you're right, Brenda. People love bad news. And they run with it. And they hold on to it. And nobody wants to give trolls that exactly. They run with it. And then all of a sudden, all of Africa has this problem. All of Africa has this negative problem. And... You know, those of us who care about Africa don't want to promote any of that because it's already out there. But at the same time, I think because, at least in America, African Americans, there are those of us who put Africa on a pedestal. And uh, I think I think it was Prince Mega, I believe, in the comments who said this beautifully, and I pinned his comment. Uh, you know, we have a fantasy about Africa and we think Africa owes us. And it's like, we don't wanna be where we come from. We don't wanna be judged by our skin color and everything. But then we come here and because we have the same skin color, we expect to be treated like royalty or perfect or, you know, not like foreigners, but we are foreigners. And, you know, I, I've heard people say, you know, I don't deserve this, like they're treating me this, these people treating me these people. And, you know, we're, we're being treated just like anybody else who is uneducated about the way to do things here. We're being treated the same way as somebody who's ignorant about the way businesses run here or the way um, bartering goes here. And, um, you know, but it's like, okay, do I tell my my potential repat community what I'm struggling with and what other people may be struggling with? Or do I keep that to myself and only promote, you know, the positive things so my family doesn't worry about me? So my coworkers aren't like, ooh, she left. And, you know, people think certain to eat. Like, you don't want them to run with it. But then it gets to the point where you have to be honest. At least I, I do. And um, there needs to be, for, for Americans, uh, Black Americans specifically, because I think in the UK there's a lot more, uh, in Europe there's a lot more um, Afro-descendants who uh, at least are first gen generation, second generation, their parents come from another country. So they are used to moving around more. But us, we don't, hey, Africa queen, hey, Giselle. You know, we're not used to 400 years. We never went nowhere, most of us. Um, so, you know, for somebody in the comments to say African-Americans are the only nationality that can't la la la. And I'm like, first of all, we don't have a nation, so we're not a nationality. But all technicalities aside, this is new for us. And um, so all this, like, you guys need to adjust and adapt like everybody else. That's what we're doing. And it doesn't look pretty all the time. And, you know, I don't tell people when I get scammed. I don't publicize that because 
I don't want to promote negative things about the country. The things are already out there about Africa anyway. But at the same time, um, every now and then, I think it's healthy to remind people that these things do happen. Even if you're from here, my husband's from here. He lived here till I think he lived here at least 20, 25 years of his life, something like that. And, uh, you know, but where we are now is not our hometown. So he has to watch his back. People smile in your face. You speak the language, you, you know the culture, you're from here. None of that matters. So for other people that look like us to come here, you know, and then expect to be treated like different, like nothing bad can happen. I think I forget what Prince said. He said, um, what did he say? That we, we feel like Africa it has to be flawless, you know, and, and that Africa owes us because of whatever history. And it's like, Africa is not really the, the one who owes us. It's, it's our captors that owe us. You know what I mean? It's, it's those who, who kidnapped us that owe us and we never got paid from them. So, you know, I think this expectation of perfection is just really uh, unfair and uh, un un unrealistic. Somebody said AAs are generally broke and cannot unite to start businesses in Africa. Um, Cantec, that's actually false. Um, if you do your proper research, there are many uh, affluent communities that were destroyed, uh, African-American communities that were destroyed in the United States historically. Um, I think Central Park was one of them, um, but, um, but you can research that yourself. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just leave that there. But um, anyway, so as I'm reading the comments, like I've spent most of my morning, you know, reading the comments and responding because, um, you know, and most of them were good comments. It's not like, you know, and I got a lot of calls from friends of mine that were like, or messages like, hey, that was, I'm so glad because we're all going through the same thing. And it's like, you don't want to tell somebody that's here, you know, it may only be five uh, expats in the same town, at least for Senegal, like it may be five of us here, black Americans. And you don't want to like judge somebody's journey because it is a journey. And um, so you can't really tell them like, shake them like, hey, stop complaining because we all have days like that. I just think that our mindset shouldn't be that of like entitlement. And because we, we make the assumption, some of us, that because we have the skin color that we have, that we cannot act like our Anglo ancestors that, you know, that raped and pillaged and, you know, th that blood is in us. You know, we are capable of looking down on people, which there are people here who do. And, um, but at the same time, people can evolve and grow out of it if they stay the course. And so I don't want to judge people too harshly because um, maybe their delivery could be better and more compassionate. I think a lot of things that I felt and saw when I first came here, I might have thought the same things, but I don't fix my mouth to say it in a way that would offend or that would other someone else. I'm not gonna say these Africans. And for some people to talk to me as if my husband's not African, like these, you know, the patriarchy and all this stuff, it's like, you know, these are melanated people, but we still have a have a, a Tuba mentality and we don't realize it because I, maybe we think because we're not accepted in America, so we must be like, accepted in Africa, but we're kind of straddling, like we're, we're, we're in the middle. We don't really have a place that we truly belong. Um, yes, we're, yes, Tulsa, et cetera. Thank you. People know. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, not everybody knows everything. So I would try to just educate people when I can. And so I don't, Think that this person had any ill intent and I usually don't even pay attention to that kind of stuff so but when people say AAs are generally broke things like that 
it, it comes across trollish. I don't know if this person meant that to be that way, but that's how it comes across. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm a human, so I have feelings and all that stuff. And if people want to uh, disrespect my culture repetitively and intentionally and it becomes a pattern, then, you know, then you're going to have to be removed from the village. So please be kind, um, you know, thank you. Um, <laughs> delete. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, sometimes it has to happen, but hopefully not. I, 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 I like to give people grace and give them the chance to grow. Um, Tanika Lee. Hey, Tanika Lee, how are you? I think I've seen your name before. Somebody's name is Aisha. Is it Aisha? That's my name. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> but, um, oh, Tracy and Guy, how you doing? Um, but, yeah, so I, I just wanted to talk about that. I mean, there's other things I could talk about, too. But it just really, um, it was moving that, you know, yes, Aisha. <laughs> it was moving that, um, you know, a couple of my friends, uh, one of my friends is in Gambia. Another one of my friends is in, um, in Kenya. And I was getting WhatsApp messages, and I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, yeah. You know, and a couple of, of um, uh, subscriber members of the village that have my number messaged me. And so I'm like, what did I say? So I had to watch it like three times. I didn't even remember, but I think I was just coming from the car. And hey, Humble Gambian, how you doing, bro? We all need to grow. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you from the Josephs. They love the video. Yeah, it's hard, yo. And y'all know what it is. Like, I got family here, so I can't, like, put stuff on blast. Just be like, hey, these people are this and these people are that. But stuff happens to us, too. And it doesn't happen. Like, I think, even myself included, you know, a lot of times from the West, we may have chips on our shoulders and you know, we're so used to being mistreated and neglected that we come here like fist up, like ready to knock somebody out before they do something to us. And I'm just like, and I noticed it about myself. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You don't know how much that means to me because I just say what I feel and what I think. And I try to articulate as best as possible and be as, you know, polite and diplomatic. But you never know how it's going to be received. Thank you. Thank you, Prince Mega. I appreciate that very much. You know, I actually had to get, not permission, but I ran it by my husband, you know, doing the live because I, I don't want to cause any drama. I got family here. I respect my in-laws. Like, they treat me like I've been in their family for 11 years and um, 12. And uh, so I wouldn't never want to put... Uh, any any you know anything bad on my last name and their last name so I'm very careful with what I share but there's sometimes where I do go through it especially initially moving here um, but it's like you can't share that because then people are gonna think you made a mistake and everybody's looking at you like there's pressure from this side like you guys left America to come here why why did you guys Hey, bro. Mwah. That's my brother right there. Melanated Mr. Mosley. Love you, man. Um, but, like, your family and your coworkers be, like, ready to find something like, oh, you made a mistake. Like, oh, you know, told you you shouldn't have moved there. You know, I think I told uh, a friend of mine who's also married to Senegalese. Um, I, I told her something about, like, the food was, I was so tired of eating the same cuisine. And she's like, yep, I, I know, see, girl, love, you know, and the way she said it was kind of in a way that kind of made me feel like she was like, yeah, you can't, they don't feed us like salads and things like that that we're used to, like kind of, not like I told you so, but it just had that energy to me. And every now and then I'll feel I'll hear the person they'll, they'll um, hear from them 
sorry, and they'll um, ask me certain questions, kind of like for me to detail, like, oh, so do you have to pay taxes for this? And do you, like, instead of just being happy for you, it's kind of like they find, try to find something like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, but are they building, like, how much do you pay for that? And how much, like, kind of like that. And it just makes you feel like not everybody's rooting for you all the way. And it could just be because they're scared because they couldn't do it themselves, maybe. I don't know. This particular person because they, they're married to a Senegalese, so they've been here before. So it could be that. Who knows? Oh, the thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I forgot about that. I should thumbs up myself. Anyway, but um, things are going well. Um, yeah, not wanting, Brenda said it, not wanting you to be happy. And... And I guess that's human nature. Maybe when people aren't happy, that's what they want. And so I'm just try to be compassionate for them. And um, our sister Tiffany Banner posted a video today about her experience and why she's relocating to Ghana. Okay. Yeah, I know someone here who relocated from, from Tanzania and they came here. Um, what else? Somebody say, I enjoyed hearing your truth your last video. Thank you, Heart and Soul. Um, 143. I appreciate that. It's not an easy thing to do to be vulnerable like that um, and say something that, you know, you don't know how it's going to be received and what effect. Because I got a message from one of my old co-workers like, I saw your last video sending you love, but kind of like, are you okay or <laughs> something? And it's like, you know, everybody has good days and bad, but I think if you have a bad day, and you move to another country, people might attribute it to you moving, which is silly. It's not always the case. But, um, you know, it was very difficult for me in the beginning. And um, even though I hinted at certain things in some videos, perhaps, I never could really say, you know, everything. Because it's like, I can't, number one, put out my dirty laundry or whatever you want to call it. Like, it's family business. And number two, you know, People, people are concerned. Like, you know, my, my parents watch this. My aunts watch this. Like, people watch me and then call me later. And I, you know, you don't want to worry people. You just do what you got to do. And in that regard, I actually understand how, um, how uh, immigrants who move to the U.S., for example, feel when their family, you know, they can't tell their family back home, like African continentals and, and people from you know, Central America, Mexico, they probably don't tell their family if they're struggling. They just, you know, put on a brave face because you don't want them to worry about you and everybody's so happy for you that you made it to America. Like I can imagine the pressure of, of them wanting you to succeed and you don't want to let them down, you know, but, um, but yeah, we, we've, We've been through it, and I think sometimes people think, um, like, well, I'm here by myself, and I don't have a husband from there, so I got to be, you know, I got to be, like, extra, um, uh, not aggressive, but, like, I guess the person was trying to say they have to protect themselves and defend themselves and stuff, but, like, stuff happens to him, too, and, you know, I, <laughs> I haven't, I didn't get, hey, living hey hey zoo and shana femi what did you say living there red oh maybe i read it wrong but um let me see hold on let me read this aisha said returning to the motherland is never a mistake you had to make a huge adjustment and shift but you have to speak on your experience that make you feel comfortable yes yeah i think um I think some people might have expected it to be easy and I didn't. I knew from coming here the issues that I've had being here. I, I, know, I knew the point at which I would get homesick and I knew for what things I might be homesick. I, I purposely bought all of Amazon with me so that I can feel as comfortable and feel as at home as possible while I'm adjusting to living here. Um, but I think 
from family and coworkers if you move to Central America? Mm. Let me, I'm going to answer that in a second. That's a good question. Um, but I think that, I forgot what I was saying, actually. But it's okay. It's a lie. I can do what I want. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? If I can't remember, I guess it's okay. Um, I don't remember. Oh, well. Let's answer this question because it's good. Would I receive the same level of concern? Um. Oh, loving the red. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think Central America, maybe not because um, we're more familiar with it, especially coming from LA. Everybody knows somebody from Central America. Um, you know, maybe Mexico, if, if the news media was promoting negative things, people would be concerned about maybe, you know, violence and things like that in certain places, but, um, cause you hear stories, but, um, Central America, probably not, probably not. Mm -mm. I think Africa just gets bad, a bad rep. And because of that, I try to uphold and probably other people too. We try to uphold the, you know, positive and, and, and show that. But we can't only show that. So it's like, well, what do we do? Because any negative is going to be like everywhere. So we have to be responsible in that uh, in that regard. Let me see. I bought all of Amazon. Oh, thank you so much. You yes, I bought all of Amazon. Like I bought, I brought all of my music. I bought a record player. I bought speakers. I brought like music makes me feel comfortable and at home. And usually I miss foods that I'm used to because there's more diversity where I'm from. So I decided to learn how to cook. Um, and then I found a grocery store that sells Western Western foods, you know. So they sell Oreos and chips and salsa and stuff like that. So those things help. And then also I just learned how to cook. I made some, some mango sorbet. We got a mango tree out back. I made some mango sorbet the other day. It was bomb. And then I made guacamole for the first time. It's gonna get better, but it wasn't bad. It was edible. And like, you know, I knew that I was gonna be lonely and I knew that I was gonna, I think I made a video about like me not having friends and how I felt like that was gonna really affect me. And it did, you know, I had my birthday when I turned uh, 39, I, I was so depressed being here and being alone and not, you know, we were in my in-laws house at the time, the living situation wasn't, you know, it was an adjustment. And, um, you know, not having any friends in the area where we were, I was far away from most of the expat, repat international community. So I was bummed out, like really bad, but like, I don't blame the country for that. You know what I mean? And I think some of us have a habit of putting down an entire nation because of a bad experience with one person. And, you know, we, we've been scammed by, I'm whispering like nobody gonna hear me, by family members. Like, oh, he's in the other room. But like, somebody got us for 300 talking about they could hook us up. I'll tell you about it later, but like way later, but we don't talk to this person no more. And it's a family member, like, you know, oh yeah, I got you, I got you. Because people see him, you lived abroad, ooh, 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 ooh. like you got it. They don't care. Like people are people and people, we need to allow continental African people to be people, good and bad, positive, negative. You know, he went to the he went to the states. Somebody thought he could be a model, and I told him I think it's a scam, and it was. And he got got, and it was a black dude. He didn't blame all African Americans. He didn't say America this and this and that. Even though America is like probably top notch when it comes to scamming people, they just put it in the fine print. But he didn't blame everybody. So it's like, oh, this country, this this and that. So it's like when we come here and we have a bad experience, they they liars, they try from the day. 
Like, there's a way to say things that can be truthful yet also respectful, you know. Um, and and culturally sensitive, you know. Let me see. What else did somebody say? Thank you, um, Heart and Soul, for reminding me what I was saying earlier. I hate when that happens. Um, in life, it's the things you didn't do that you regret. Not so much the things you do. Because you can always gain value from the things you've done, even if it's a lesson. Exactly. You know, I didn't get all my stuff from, from shipping. I have a stove, a brand new stove that my mom gave me. Sorry, mom. It's in Gambia. And it's been there for like seven months. And the dude is like, oh, sorry. Brought half our stuff. Like, but I don't blame, like I could say, oh, they don't know how to run a business or they didn't do a good job and nobody used them. But part of that is on me too. I, I was in a rush to move. I didn't do my due diligence in packing, or organizing and creating an itemized list where I could have been like, I need all this stuff, take pictures of all my stuff. I was, I was sick at the time, I was pregnant at the time. And my husband handled it, and I knew better, but we didn't. We made a mistake. Next time, we'll do it differently. I don't have to be like, these people, uh, you know, like, yeah, were we upset? Are we upset? He's, he called a guy, curse him out every month. But, like, we can't just act like, throw a pity party and act like this country or this continent is supposed to roll out the red carpet for us because our great 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 grandmothers used to be somewhere around here like you know we're, we're not from here like I was talking to the homegirl one time and she was we were just venting to each other and she was like I don't get this cultural thing and I don't you know whatever and I'm like she was like cause she's like I'm Afrocentric but like this stuff, I don't understand why they do it this way. And just, I guess she she was kind of concerned about some of the things, like maybe, you know, I don't know what it was specifically, but like, for example, um, some of the people who who, who um, marry or date the older foreigners, and things like that and whatever. And so it's like, we can't understand them, yo. Like, we ain't them. We're not African. And I told her that, like, we are not African. And the, the sooner you realize that we are not in that sense, you know, we're not of this land as far as being born here and being bred here and being raised here with the mindset and everything. We grew up in Tubab two, two land. Like, so, so it's okay that we're different. We don't have to be the same. We don't have to, because I think what happens is we come here and we expect people to adjust to us. No, that's not it. That's not it. Let me read some more comments. I don't want to be on the soapbox. I like to be positive. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I just basically just letting y'all know it's not it's not all bed and roses like you see the instagram you see the videos and stuff yeah i'm showing you the positive stuff but behind that positive stuff there are challenges like you know things take longer than you expected building construction stuff like that but i'm not gonna talk to people and, and in a way that's condescending or talk about them in a way that's condescending and feel like oh africa's not treating me right or Af I'm like no come on this is life nothing's fair and and nobody's we're all special in, you know in the eyes of our creator but like nobody's better than anybody where bad stuff is not going to happen to you if you feel like that then you know you're going to be disappointed a lot at least that's how i feel i could be wrong let me see Tanika Lee, I'd much rather you share the clear-cut truth than to sugarcoat in info. The good and not so good pros and cons. Because hubby and I are considering Senegal as our home. I'm I'm glad. And um 
you know, there's some things that I can't say. I probably said some stuff in this live. I don't know. The live might go away after I have to check. But um, I think that um, there's some things that, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't say and public, publicize it. Uh, but, you know, you can always email me if you have questions about certain things. That's why I love when people do contact me because when they do, I can be a little more open. Um, because I, I'm, I'm not about putting out ne negative stuff, like, like just for the sake of doing it or, or overly doing it because there's enough out there about, about mother Africa and I'm not gonna, um, you know, put family business out there like that, you know, let me see. Brenda said. It's good to have a head up before coming to the motherland. Uh -huh. Thank you, Joe. Hey, say what? What's up? Say what? How are you? I I remember you. You you um. I think you commented on the last video too. I hope all is well with you. Thanks for coming, stopping by. Correct. Traveling across continents is rel relatively. Uh, I guess you're saying relatively new for us African Americans. Um, and telling your family you're moving to the motherland is an even newer phenomenon. Yes, it's definitely new. We don't leave. Like the last time we left somewhere, look how we, we ended up in shackles and chains. Like it's very traumatic. That's why when the, the commentator that was talking about everybody else is doing it, everybody is not the same. Every community is not the same, you know, and it's not. It's not fair and it's not a correct assessment to just be like, y'all do just like all the other immigrants. No, mm -mm. we were captured. <laughs> this is not, you know, an easy thing to do. And, and the way, I mean, yes, the Caribbean, the people were captured as well, but they don't live, live with their oppressor anymore, if you want to say it like that like not in the same way we did you know there's a lot of fear like we were told a lot of negative things about africa that was passed down you know kuta kente got his foot cut off <laughs> um, I, I wasn't laughing at kuta kente got his foot cut off but i'm just saying um let's see we'll get used to it eventually yeah we will get used to it eventually i'm so glad that it, that people are just not starting to get passports for their kids my parents never got a passport for me when i was a kid like that's not a thing oh yeah the stove bro i definitely uh thought about you but i didn't want to you know i know you got stuff going on but uh yeah i, I, need, I need my stove like my stove in my chair i was about to come down there and be like look um because uh we might have to get it ourselves but he's like no the principal of the thing he's supposed to bring our stuff he didn't bring our stuff so he gotta bring it and i'm like i just want it at this point <laughs> i'll come get it myself if i got to if i have to so yeah i'm hit you offline melanated mostly sorry for the tacos no problem Lovely girl, heart and soul, traveling sister. I love her. Said, "Don't come to Africa expecting continental Africans to know our history. Most do not." Mm -hmm. And she said, "How much history do you know about the country you're coming to? That part? Do you know the president, the past presidents, and?" I would be crushed. I would be crushed. 
crushed. Like, like go back to your country if you want to speak English. Like, if I'm speaking English and some some local people came up to me, my friends like, speak French, speak Wolof. Like, that's so mean. Like, man, America has some growing to do. That's for sure. I will email you sometime soon. Yes, Tanika, definitely email me. Um, and we could talk online. Uh, my email address should be in, well, probably not on this live video, but um, it's on that, what's that, about page on my channel. But it's Afro Millennium Mama at Gmail. Just, just, um, you can just spell Afro Millennium Mama, like the same way I spell it here, and at gmail.com. Um, okay. I'll type it in the chat too. Let me type it now before I forget. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I think at the point that I did that last video, I was just, people were complaining to me and sometimes it gets so draining and I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't have it easy either. And, you know, but I can't just, I can't just wallow in that. Like, I have to find a solution. Like, I get down and then I get back up. Like, it's not going to be, you know, what was me, this country, la la, and then just do nothing. I'm the one who has to, who has to adapt to this. Um, let me see, make sure I type my thing right. There we go. So that's the, um, my email address. DC. Hey, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm just talking right now. Nothing really uh, too profound, but I did want to open it up to people for conversation since we were in the comments like heavy with like paragraphs of people writing paragraphs of stuff. So I was like, let's just talk regular. Mm hmm. Noted, duly noted. Um, oh, the audio is choppy. Okay, I don't know why that is. Is it still? Is it still choppy? Cause this is my regular. I don't know if the AC is blowing on it. Let me know. Has it has it been choppy the whole time? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, the audio is shaking. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Huh. I wonder what's wrong with the... Oh, the audio's good now. Okay. Maybe, you know, it could be because I have two phones. Maybe I put it too close together or something. Thank you. Thank you guys for letting me know. Okay. Good stuff. Oh, good. Not the whole time. Perfect. I was like, oh, that was a long time to have it be choppy. Okay. Good. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Oh, look at who it is. The Happy Companion. What's up, bro? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. How are you? To mute, okay. Well, this one is, is it muted? Well, you guys said it's better now, so I hope it's okay. I think it's probably just the interference. I think I had one phone too close to the other, so. Just let me know if it changes or not hopefully it stays good okay cool thank you thank you bro it's clear now okay but yeah other than that everything's going well the building is going well i don't know if you guys want to talk about other stuff um but it's 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 a thank you i'm glad i'm glad i caught this tonight I know everybody's busy grinding. We don't have time to chop it up like we used to, but yeah, I check in I check in on you every now and again. I see you doing good things. I think I seen you at Black Acres with uh what's her name? I forget her name. From Kenya. Tigress and stuff. Um but yeah, I can't wait to see your finished home. Yes, I can't wait to move into my finished home. Thankfully, 
the um, rainy season hasn't started yet so here so we can try to get in we're supposed to try to get in this month but I added like two months to it just in case for things to happen in my mind to make sure if things happen you know things come up and changes and what have you so maybe two months God willing um, will be at least done enough to move in and maybe they'll make maybe little incidentals and stuff let me see what look on this is better um, we're in good company with all our brand yeah everybody's here yeah black excellence that's what's up don't ever let people say we can't come together i think people always put african americans down like oh all the other communities work together everybody got inside family problems it's just we don't know about theirs. And so as long as we don't put stuff out in front street, we can deal with what we gotta deal with and still come together. I mean, we're not a monolith. We're not all the same, but at the same time, don't let people tell you we don't work together because we do and we're doing it. That's that's why we're here. Like if we didn't work together and have this like community of people giving information to others, like I wouldn't be here without the YouTubers that came before me and you know, it's just like we 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 we're better than what we give ourselves credit for sometimes. Trey, that's the homie. What's up, sis? Um, the Mexican food. So there is one Mexican restaurant, and that's authentic. All the other tacos are these French tacos that look like chalupas or something like that. They're weird, but they don't have the flavor. But um, the homie that makes them in uh, the car, he has a food truck now and a little spot with some tables. But I order every time I go. It's bomb. He make elote, and I was never a fan of elote like like that because you could always get it. But now that I can't have it when I want, I'm, you know, the quesadillas are good. But the actual like, I don't know how Gambia is, but here we have different cheeses that's not. The Mexican cheeses, so it tastes different. Um, I think they use Swiss here, or they use other stuff. But he has the right cheese. And uh, so it actually and it makes sour cream. I think he makes the sour cream, so it's really good. The tacos are bomb, no problem there at all. He makes the tortillas himself and stuff. So definitely, when you come visit me, we're gonna hit up the spot. Go to the car. Con mayone mayonesa y chile. Mayonesa para nada. You don't put, they, they, so they, put mayon they put mayonnaise on the elote? I didn't even know. Well, no, nah, I don't think, I don't, really? I know it's butter. Butter and I thought it was sour cream. Don't give me no mayonesa. I don't want no mayonnaise on my stuff. <laughs> mayonnaise can stay over there. <sighs> Let's see. Senegal have many things that Gambia doesn't. Uh, Aji, yeah, it's definitely the different. But then when I went to Gambia, they have, um, I think they have more um, maybe American stuff, and here is French, more French stuff. So French mustard, it tastes good sometimes, but after a while you get tired of it. Like I want American mustard, and I want. American um, mayonnaise, like the mayonnaise is different in here too. But um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I dream of black queens. I'm trying to see about this. You trying to see about what? Tacos, Mexican food. Let's see. Mm. I heard in Gambia it was uh, a storm. I haven't um, seen the uh, like seen it or seen what it looked like. Um, but I heard there was a, uh, oh, Mexican food, yeah. Thumbs up, thank you. Um, yeah, I haven't um, seen what happened with the storm, but I heard that uh, it was pretty strong. Really, no joke, wow. I have to, I, I saw that there was, I think, Bag did a video, I just saved it so I could watch it later, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, that it was like a windstorm or something. 
Mm, dang. Sounds crazy. So it's like full on rainy season there? Like does it rain pretty much every day or is it not rainy season yet? Cause we only got rain once and it was just for the morning and it went away, but it wasn't hard. <sighs> Pearl Moon, hey, Jennifer, hey, you been watching these videos the whole time and I didn't know who you were. And you said something once, I believe it was you. Somebody said something where I'm like, they must know me, but I don't know who they are. That was you. I don't know what comment you left before, but you left another one. That's my homegirl. We went to uh, high school together. We played volleyball together. And what else did we do together? No, you played softball. I didn't play softball. But hey, you got to come visit me. I didn't know you'd be watching me. See, people be watching and they don't even be telling you. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. You got to come visit. Are you still on the East Coast? The flight is real quick. <laughs> yes, you got to. When the, house, when the house is done, like, you're coming. You bring the girls and everything. Oh, te that's right. I did see you move to Texas. Oh, I forgot. I skipped the, um... Hey, Ish. Yeah, nobody called me Ish. That's okay. See, you were sneaky this whole time. <laughs> um... Nathan Goldsmith. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Um, Zoo and Shayna. I think it's Shayna. Uh, are there any Senegalese fashion houses or designers you like buying from? Man, I don't have no designer money. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't found the right tailor for me yet. Um, there are people who are talented. But then things don't get done quickly. And then there are people who do things quickly, but they do it in an old style fashion or, you know, for the taste might not be like you can ask for a certain style dress and show them a picture and they'll make it into the version that they feel is best. <laughs> so I haven't found a good tailor yet that I would consider going to for all my stuff. And then there's some that are very talented, like this one tailor that is right here um, across the street from my house. He makes great clothes, like fashion forward type stuff that's, you know, good for the weather here, but at the same time, the style that I'm used to. Um, but uh, he doesn't have any staff, so he does it by himself. And um, so the process kind of, Patience is a virtue here. But um, in the meantime, when I get impatient, I just buy stuff. I went to Dakar. Um, my friend that lives there, she took me around downtown. They have, it looks like um, if you've ever been to the alley in Los Angeles, where they sell all the stuff, like it looks like that. Exactly. And, uh, and I bought a whole bunch of stuff um, that was already made and it, it worked out better for me because I don't have the patience. Okay, the rainy season just started. It's not every day, but it rains pretty hard and the heat is bananas. That part, I didn't know about the heat. Is Are the mosquitoes like worse because of the rain? Because I'm scared of that part. Um, where we are, close to the beach right now, uh, they say it can flood the streets and stuff and flood everything. And I know what, what I've heard, because I never come in the rainy season here, but. I know there's frogs everywhere, at least in the north where, where my husband's from. And then there's also um, mosquitoes, like, everywhere. And it's humid here. Like, this is the first, not the first time I've been here in the humidity, but it's, it's very muggy. And so it makes it, I've been using the AC, so. Um, but, uh. I would like the rain to kind of cool off from the muggy mugginess. West Coast, the, wait, WM West Coast, 1980. How are you? Um, is the area you're building in a subdivision? I'm not sure what a subdivision is, but I don't think it's a subdivision. 
Um, give me the definition of the subdivision so I'm sure. Um, uh, subdivision, mm, I don't think so. Like, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Just um, clarify for me so I can be sure of what a subdivision is. Cause, um, I don't want to give the wrong answer. Yes, Santi Alley. Yes, Santi Alley. Exactly. That's what it looked like in Dakar. And it was hectic getting there. Like, it was stuff. People selling stuff everywhere. But, like, my friend, she had a day lodge. She had to hold my hand. Like, cars coming up on you. Like, taxis about to hit you. It's just, yeah, it's a lot. But, um, but I got good stuff there. And I got good deals. It wasn't crazy expensive um, at all. Let's see. Did you get did your items come from LA? So that's a story. So yeah, my items that I shipped, I didn't have my own container. Uh, I put my stuff in a container of someone else's. Um, shout out to uh, Heidi Shipping Company. Um, he, the owner there, Prince, put us in contact with someone who was already going to ship his container to Gambia. And actually, no, take that back to Senegal. But this is a person from Gambia. So the items were supposed to come to Dakar first. Then uh, what happened was they ended up going to Gambia first. Something changed. I don't remember why. The port. Uh, I don't know if it changed before we shipped our stuff or after we had already decided to ship. But the person agreed to drive our stuff up here. Um, so what happened was because we didn't have a rental at that time and space to store our stuff, we were planning to store it at my in-laws and planning to store it at somebody else's in, in the north in San Luis where, where we were, my husband's family and every, everybody's there. But then we changed our mind because to, which is, is about three, four hours from here. So we were like, no, they can hold on to our stuff until we have a place to store a house with storage and instead of transporting it from Gambia all the way up like eight hours to to San Luis and then bringing it all the way here again we decided to leave it in Gambia until um, so I think it was there for maybe uh, two months three months and um, at that time finally we secured a place here in uh, Simone is where we are um, not far from Umbur, where we're building. And we're like, okay, we got a place with a garage so we can keep our stuff. So they brought our stuff. But the problem was they didn't have things organized and left some of our stuff. And uh, <clears throat> some of our items were shipped in one container, another, some items were shipped in another container. So there's some items that we, when we went to Gambia the first time back in March, we um we picked them up. Shout out to Melanie and Mr. Mosley. He helped us um, find find the place and, and link up with the person. And uh, so we got some of our stuff. Uh, but there were items that were too bulky. So those were left there. And then there's some stuff that may be missing. Some boxes that may be missing. But um, we haven't had time to go or the space to go through them i just looked for the stuff that i needed now in this rental house that we're in and pulled those things out some stuff i i haven't found yet but we haven't been able to go through all of the stuff because there's nowhere to put everything this house is too is too um, small it's a three-bedroom house but it's, there's no storage anywhere it's a vacation house so i guess they didn't you know they didn't really they don't have a lot of furniture or closets and things so you know, because of that, we, and we have other stuff going on, buildings and things like that, we didn't really follow up with the person. And then every time we remember to follow up, they're like, I don't have anybody driving there and this and this and that. And I'm like, look, we just got to go down there again and figure out a way to get it. Because people take their time and they're just kind of, and eventually, you know, some of your stuff might be missing. So, you know. But... 
that was our bad. We we didn't have our own container because we didn't buy one and our stuff got split up. I think we could have had somebody else. Um, I think we could have rented a, a container better, but we didn't have enough stuff to fill it up either, I, I believe. And that was probably one of the issues. But at the time, I was worried about so much other stuff. We were selling our home and other things. And so... And I was and I was uh, pregnant. I was a little ill, um, so I, I was just like, you handle it, and you know, we did the best we could for that moment. But in you know, of course, hindsight, like, definitely could have done things differently or been more organized or, you know, maybe use someone else. But I think you know, our first time trying it out, we kind of just went with what we, the information resources that we had at our disposal at that time. So yeah, but I definitely need my stove because it's a bomb stove and my mommy gave it to me. So, let's see. It seems as though the area you're building is gonna be on the up and up. Definitely, uh, there was nobody there when we bought the land last year, last um, January. And we were buying it for way in the future. And all of a sudden, when we came back a year later to the area, um, <clears throat> uh, the roads were built, the paved roads for the main road, and even the dirt road was paved um, where to the entrance to the neighborhood. And then the next month, there were people living there. There's a there where they built the new road, which goes to the I guess the highway freeway, but it paved the toll road, um, which is like a freeway for us. Um, they have a road leading up to it that's a gravel, uh, gravel road, I guess, you know, regular street, like, um, sim not cement, gra I, is it gravel? Um, excuse the noise, that was my um, mosquito catcher thing. But, um, so they have the the roads going in like they paved the roads and then where there were some people who just live in the middle of the that area where they built the road and the government gave them land in our neighborhood so there's all these houses that were built in like a week like two bedroom three bedroom houses that people just built with tin roof they they gave them enough money to you know build and um and gave them the land for free and because they were just, you know, kind of moving around or whatever. And so now we have neighbors, like we have a whole neighborhood. And then we came back another week and there's already a, a little corner store there. And there's already, a, um, uh, I would say King Kaidi, but it's a like a hardware store. There's a hardware store right on the street when you come in. And these are small, like little tin type of shack things. But... You know, like when we go there now, we can go buy, you know, water, chips, cookies, whatever. And like the the uh, warehouse store sells the cement and all that stuff. And so businesses are coming up. Like there's people who already have um, animals and stuff, I guess, and growing plants. And like they have backyards with trees that they've planted. And so it's like full on neighborhood already, um, which is awesome. Yeah, let me see. Um, the mosquitoes are and frogs are gangster after the rain. Dang, the mosquitoes are that bad? Oh man, that's gonna kill me. That's gonna kill me, I can't do mosquitoes. That's the one thing that like, man. I hope I build an immune system. I haven't actually had allergic reactions like I used to. I get bit a lot still, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not having the swelling. So I'm hoping that means that they're starting not to, I mean, they're starting to like me more or accept me more here and not be too harsh. I mean, like a neighbor, do they have plots for sale besides yours? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so yes. And that's what I was thinking. Like it's divided and stuff. So, um, we bought three plots together, and that's what we're building on. They're like 250 square meters each. 
So it's a total of 750 that we're building on. So we have enough room for a nice size pool and also um, a garden. Um, I, I want my garden in the back, vegetable garden in the back and some couple of fruit trees. Um, so uh, it is a subdivision. Okay. Yeah, my friend that came, uh, my friend Brian, he was here uh, back in April, May. And he he bought land in the same area, and then I have another homegirl who um, she bought her land there in December. Um, so we're gonna have neighbors already. Uh, how's the building process going? Oh yeah yeah yeah. So the building process is going pretty well. Um, even though like we have two buildings in construction at the same time. So one is slower than the other one. We have a company doing and the other one is independent contractor. So it's a different process, but thankfully we have <clears throat> family uh, in, in his hometown that are helping with the, um, with the um, construction down there. And then we're monitoring this one, which now that we're getting, well, I haven't posted the video yet because I'm still editing it, but uh, we're at the point now where they're putting in um, tiles and things. And so we have to be more uh, present because even though it's a company, um, you know, when you have, it's a, it, and it's a Senegalese company, uh, <clears throat> I feel like when you have two people working together, like us, my, my husband being from here and the, the owner of the company is from here, I think the level of comfortability kind of makes people a little lax. And I feel like um, sometimes I have to push my, my foreigner card, like expectations and stuff, because it's harder for it's harder to conduct business when you feel like you're family with a person or, you know, you have a rapport and you're from the same culture. You can't really like, like here, business and relationships mix. So you don't have to be friends with someone, but you still talk to them in a friendly way. And kind of, it's, it's harder to be distant. Like us, you know, business is business and we kind of, you know, but like doing business with a close friend, some for a lot of people that can be hard or doing business with, you know. So it's, um, there are a little bit of few challenges, but nothing like overly stressful. You know, sometimes people will try to cut corners maybe, or they'll promise you bigger than what they can give. And so for that, in because of that, you have to be more vigilant and like, look, I mean, and you can't be hesitant to be like, you know, they say, oh, this is going to look good. You should get this because maybe they have the extra leftover black black floor tiles and you want gray. And they'll be like, oh, just do that. And it's like, if you want what you want, you have to. It's, it's like some people have problem turning food away at a restaurant. But when it's your house, it's your custom made house and you got to live there and you want what you want. So sometimes you have to kind of um, be there and put pressure on them. So if they say, you know, tomorrow we're going to do this and they want to make you happy, that's a cultural thing. People say things. They may overpromise or they may um, get your hopes up. Like tomorrow we're going to start this and tomorrow we're going to do this. And you get there and they didn't arrive with the equipment or the per people aren't there yet. And, and we haven't really... Um, it hasn't been really bad, but I think our presence being there makes a difference. Um, or his presence being there. I go every other day because now we're doing things that, you know, affect me as far as like decor, layout and stuff. How big I want my kitchen island to be. Things like that that maybe my husband might not, um, you know, be as interested in or involved in and just go with whatever they say. And I'm like, wait a minute, I would like this. Can we change this? Because it looks, you know, the, the aesthetic, blah, blah, blah. And so being there does help. So it, 
I can only imagine if we were using different contractors for different stuff and not one company, that that would be even more of a headache because there's more people to call. And now we only have one person to call for everything. So if we need to talk about what we want, you know, we don't have to call the brick layers and the this person and this person. So, you know, I think when you don't go there and show your face, it it's easier for people to be detached and the people working, you know, for the company or whatever they're not they're just doing what they got to do but if you're there they see your face okay this is what we're building it for so let's you know let's grind and so you know you put a little fire into people um when you show your presence so that's going well the apartment complex we've had to make some adjustments um you know we may not build it as uh as build as many mm -hmm. units as what um as what uh we planned initially because the prices of certain things changed so we may start with a smaller building and then in the future add on things like that so but everything's going well the, the people are doing a great job and um i'm very pleased with it i mean i've already i already kind of set my expectations to the point where I thought, okay, this is our plan, but we have to be flexible. Things might not go how we expect 100%. So, you know, if our money, you know, the budget, whatever, we just have to be flexible and figure out what's best for us, um, what makes uh, financial sense, and then and go with that. Mm. Let's see. Do you have a friend? Oh, the uh, the alert the the allergy pen things. No, if a friend, I think that's how it's pronounced. No, I don't. Um, my allergic reaction with the mosquitoes is just they get they can get really big. Not all of them, but if I don't um, treat it right away, like generally if I put aloe vera on it right when I feel it, um, I can usually tell right when I get bit before it starts to swell. And I put some um, aloe vera, sometimes if I don't have aloe vera, I put apple cider vinegar, but uh, aloe vera on it and it'll go down. So I haven't had any that have been swollen, but that's my only reaction. It's just a really irritable, huge thing and it's kind of hard and it's red, um, uh, large bump. Let's see. Combien de cefa pour les terres? Ah, pour le terrain, uh, uh, email me, uh, Shana, and I'll, I'll let you know how much it costs. Um, le CFA, j'ai oublié le prix. I, 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 I know all the prices in um, U.S. dollars because it came out my U.S. bank. But um, email me or message me on Instagram, and I'll tell you how much how much they cost. Uh, let's see. Erica Wilson. Oh, thank you. This is just an experiment that I tried. I've been wanting to do it, but I worked for the government, so I couldn't really experiment like that, or I didn't feel like it, so I was like, oh. But now I'm free, so I can do what I want. So if it didn't come out right, I don't have to worry about, you know, impressing some boss or some, you know, higher up somewhere. So thank you. The way I handle the mosquitoes. Get wild mint, let it dry, burn it, let it smolder. Place it under your bed. Oh, really? Okay. I'm learning a lot about mosquitoes. Somebody else just told me, like, I just figured out what a neem tree looks like, and they're everywhere. <clears throat> Somebody mentioned taking a bath in the neem, like boiling it and bathing with it. So, okay, I'm going to try that. Thank you. Um... Thank you, bro. I'm gonna try that. Uh, we got mint. Okay, let it let it dry, burn it. Okay, and we dry our mint. It's outside, and put it under the bed. Wow, that's a good one. Okay, let's see. Glad to see you in these live chats. Okay, you're doing good. Oh, Barbara, is that for me? 
Keep up the good work and thanks for sharing your journey. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. I thought mint was a solution for mosquitoes. But yeah, I, I heard mint, lavender, anything that has a, a fragrance. Um, uh, citronella, like lemongrass. Uh, what else? The neem. Yeah, rosemary. So in my garden at the house, that's what I plan to have everywhere. Lemon tree, they say even lemon tree. Um, but yeah, I want all that. I want mint like spread out throughout my my yard since we use it every day for the attire anyway. We tend to forget that our wonderful deodorant soap and attract mosquitoes. Avon skin so soft help. Mosquito repellent bracelets. Okay, thank you. Yeah, perfumes and lotions, that's true. I actually put um, citronella oil and a little bit of neem oil in my uh, shea butter. And that's what I use every day. But of course, you know, after some time it wears off. So you got to reapply. Are there any local bombs to treat the bites? Uh, Vitago and Zero Shimoa. I don't know if there's any local bombs for mosquito bites. I've I've only um I've only used aloe vera since I've been here because I've been trying not to um buy ointments, especially because they have chemicals in it. If I'm gonna be using it often, it's not like I mean it's a long term you know solution versus uh you know since I'm living here, I don't want to be using chemicals all the time and be spending a lot of money. So if I can grow some aloe vera, that'll be good. Oh, wild mint, not the edible mint. Okay, so I have to figure out, thank you. I have to figure out what that is then, the wild man. I'll look, I'll, I'll look into that. Thank you. Oranges, I heard of the oranges, dry, dried oranges, uh, dried orange peel, rather. Thank you. Um, and cloves, yeah, cloves has a good smell too. I bought some clove oil and sometimes I just mix a whole bunch of oils in my shea butter and see whatever works. Um... African Realty. Hey, Sister House, Senegal, treating you. Senegal, Nahna, everything's good. Cool, fine, nice. Um, oh, the neem I can use as well. Okay. So, dry the neem, burn it, let it smolder, and put it under my bed. Okay. That's, um, I never thought of that. That's, that's pretty good. Okay. I'm going to do that. The mosquitoes be getting me during the day, too. But, um... Yeah. But Senegal's good. Um, I feel less homesick. I feel less, like, wanting to go back. Even though I have, you know, family uh, in the States, I don't really feel the urge, you know, to, to go back like I was. Like, sometimes, I'm, you know, I want to see my dad or... Stuff like that, but, um, you know, I don't miss, like, the food and stuff. I found solutions to all that. I just had Ethiopian food today. There's an Ethiopian spot um, here in uh, in Sally, close by. So I found that. I had some food, so I'm like, okay, I'm getting the lay of the land. Like, it's taking time to know the area. I found a bomb, uh, authentic Italian food spot. Um... I found the Mex. I got my Mexican fake spot, so it's like okay, everything's coming together. Just gotta get some Jamaican stuff and some pupusas, and we'll be good. <laughs> and the rest, I'm gonna have to learn how to how to make it. Let's see. Trey says the last time you purchased a yoga mat. Tell us the truth. Have you been using it? Yes, yes, I have been using it. That's the truth, Ruth. Um, I do yoga every. Like, I try to do yoga twice a week uh, in the mornings. Um, and then uh, other mornings, I'll go jog walking. Um, and then uh, try to lift some weights. I have my, I got my weights. I got that in my container. <laughs> my um, dumbbells and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I try to do my yoga. I'm not good at it yet. I've been, I keep trying. It's been, it's been a while. But I haven't done. Um, I mean, maybe I'm good and I don't realize it, but I want to be able to, like, stand on my head and stuff. One time, um, my friend took me to this yoga spot in L.A., and Russell Simmons was there. And 
he was, I think at the time he was in his, in his early 60s. I mean, I think he's in his early 60s now, but he was at least 60 or 59. And he was like right next to me and like standing on his head and doing all. And I'm just like, man, I'm over here 30 and he's like doing it. So I'm like, okay, I got to step my yoga game up. I used to think yoga was 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 for, you know, softies, like people who don't do real sports. But uh, yoga is pretty tough. It's actually pretty tough. Like, flexibility is good, good for us. Let's see, especially on the beach. Oh, yoga on the beach? I, I did yoga on the beach once with a homegirl in Dakar, but, um, but the sand, I didn't like it. And it was, and the sun was like right on my face. Nah, that don't work for me. To uh, encourage family and friends to visit you. No, yes, um, friends, friends definitely will be visiting me. Uh, family, we shall see. We shall see. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, I've been coming here for years now and they haven't come yet so we'll see it might not interest people you know it's up to them i can't i can't um hold nobody hostage but i'll show them pictures of the house we try to entice them with the pool we'll see what happens but um i definitely feel the need to go back and visit for my kid if it wasn't for my kid i probably wouldn't be as um, like pressed to do it because of her age and I want her to remember you know her grandparents and her aunts and and just where she was born and where her mom's from but if it wasn't for that I don't know I would probably lay low until things seem to improve over there you know because it's like I don't know I mean maybe it's the same as it was when I was there but after getting out you see things from a bird's eye view and it's like if you don't have to be in that with the stress and the anxiety and the fear and just a lot of stuff it's like i don't know but um i was hanging with um a couple of friends it was like two people from cali two people from virginia and uh and then two guys who were born in senegal but lived in the states and and we were all talking and it's like for for the African American people we were, we were saying it's like going back there and having to switch modes like like here there's things you can do that you can't do there culturally and just the the tone is different and once you're used to being more free as far as self-expression and just letting your guard down as far as the the dangers and the violence and stuff and having to go back to like watching your back or you know just it's like people who leave their neighborhood where it, it could be violent or gang infested and things like that and you leave and you go in a place where you don't have to worry about that and you like you could breathe to go back it's kind of it makes you tense up a little bit and so for myself I feel like I would be so guarded and so like okay you know but um and not just for danger but just dealing with different types of people and how i'm used to being treated by them over there versus here and not having to deal with it it's um it'd probably be hard to swallow certain things <laughs> Oh, let me see. Let's see. We'll catch up on here. I'll be sure to bring my therapeutic medicinal grade essential oils. Yes, bring them. There are oils here. I haven't found them yet. I think um, it's a, for me, it's a language barrier because things have to be translated into French and from French to Wolof to figure out the names of things because usually people use their wall up name and you know if they don't know the French they may not know the French name so when you translate to French they still might not know what it is so 
Um, but there are oils here. I just don't know where they are yet. Hello from VA. Hey, Nikki from VA. I met some people from VA the other day. Um, yeah, they were pretty cool people. We can do yoga on the beach. I, I dream of black queens. The beach got sand on it. <laughs> I don't like getting the sand on me. Oh, uh, I will get you on your head when I come in the winter. All right. I don't know. I haven't done that in a long time. I had I had a kid, so all this is like, you got to have a strong core for that. I'm still working on that. And it's crazy because I never had time to like get myself back healthy after I have my daughter and she's five now. And it's like, finally I'm here and I have time to take care of myself and my health and stuff, you know. 30 is the new 60 now. <laughs> ah, right. Uh, well, fam, good night. All right, I might have missed you, Melanated Mr. Mosley, but have a good night. Okay, I'll, and I'll talk to you about that stove. Thank you. Why Senegalese stays up so late to 5 a.m.? You have to ask them. They ain't sleepy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know Dakar doesn't sleep. Dakar is like New York. My friend was out last night till 5.30. No, at least 5.30. She was live at 5.30 in the morning out somewhere. People don't go out until midnight a lot of times. Like, they'll take a nap first, get up, and go. Dinner is usually like 10. So, it's getting wild in the Wild West. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, I hear that for sure. Teal Wood Classic said. Hubby and I are still in Cali, so get ready. So ready to get out of here. Wow. Yeah. I know the feeling. I've been there. Cali in the house. Yeah. Uh, what time is it in Senegal now? It's almost 5 p.m. here in Texas. It is 9.56 p.m. at the moment. Usually, I like if I would do live, I like to do it in the daytime, but I know everybody over there is sleeping. And I was out today, but so I'm like, all right, I guess I'll stay up late and talk. It's not late, but use it this time I'm watching TV because when my kid goes to sleep, that's my freedom. So I think she's asleep now. She should be. So this is the time I usually watch TV and stuff. I watch a lot of reruns of old shows, The Office, and stuff like that. Uh, my nostalgia. TV. I have gotten 60 year olds to Lotus, so I'm up for the challenge. All right. Okay. I really want to, like, they have something for yoga where you put your head and, like, a, look like a stool, but look like a stool slash porta potty. Anyway, you put your head in there and you can stand on your head without, like, you know, hurting yourself or whatever. I might have to get that because, yeah, I, I, last time I stood on my head, I was probably 12. Uh, interesting here in the States. Yeah. I hear you, Pearl Moon. It's, um, it's, it's crazy. Like, you, you see things from here, and I don't watch the news, but I, little stuff come, seeps through. I might listen to a news show or Instagram or something, and it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, things some things have never changed some things are getting worse and uh you know it feels like at least for me it was coming from all different angles like you take racism out of the equation it's still a violent place you take violence out of the equation it's still people are unhealthy and they're working long hours and they're not spending time with their family and things are too expensive to even pay for childcare. Like I couldn't afford to have a, another kid unless I came here really. Cause I wasn't gonna kill myself. Like I have to still enjoy my life. And um, it's just like so much and it's so much to deal with. And uh, even microaggression stuff. It's not dangerous, but it like chips away at your psyche, like little by little. So I just, 
not having to deal with that feels so free. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. But we don't have to get into that. You know what it is. You're, you're there. I just, um, I just don't want to deal with issues if I don't have to. Like, if I see that somewhere else, I don't have to deal with that, I'd rather not. And it doesn't mean that there won't be other problems and other challenges. It just means that I prefer these challenges to those challenges. So, you know, I'm burnt out. I was talking to a lady from Virginia, and she was like, she was homesick once and went back. She came right back, and she's like, I'll get everything shipped here. I figured out how to, she's like, mm-mm. She's like, I did, did uh, almost 50 years of her life over there. She's like, I'm, I'm so done. Like, you get to a point where you just burn out, you know. Yeah. Dinner's at 10, you're at your house. Most, most is 11.30, it's insane. Philly in the house, Iceman, what's, what's going on? Whoever wants to be in the motherland will make it. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's true. I think that's true. Whoever wants, whoever wants to make it will make it. And I think it, it, ha it has to do with your mindset and how you interpret things and how you look at things. And, you know, you can't, you know, make yourself the victim all the time and blame others all the time. There's, even if somebody does you wrong or does you dirty or, or, or a situation happens to you that's unfortunate, your reaction to it is 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 crucial to how to how you will um, proceed and advance from that. It's called the matrix. Yep, there there it is. Um, do I feel comfortable giving birth in Senegal? When I was pregnant, I was comfortable with it. Um, I talked to somebody today, and I was letting them know because um, she went back every time she had a kid and I was letting her know like as far as um you know the the birth death rates that were happening with black women you know the issues that I heard Serena Williams had when she was was giving birth and Beyonce had when she they were giving birth with the what do they call it uh, the just like the implicit bias and stuff like that and how I was how I was treated in the hospital when I had my daughter. I was like, you know, I think people can be very pushy and, and the culture over there is very fear driven. And I just remember, you know, people telling me like, your baby could die, this can it this can happen, you need to do this, we need to induce you, like they use that fear, you need the flu shot and you need the flu like the way they, the way things happen there, it can stress you out, especially as a new, new first time mother or, or first time expecting mother. Um, so I'm just like, if I have my kid here, you know, the only thing that I would probably be worried about is just the language barrier. And, um, but I feel like if I wanted to have a birth a certain way that people would listen to me here more instead of being pushy and controlling, like, I've been, I was induced with my daughter three different, on three different occasions, and so I went to the hospital three different times at least, and uh, the way I was treated by the different, and I went to a different hospital when she was born, because I had a bad experience at the other, and just the way people treated you, like, a number, like, you know, the, the doctor, I was there for five days when she was born, and the doctor uh, was holding my daughter, and at the same time, she told me, um, next time, go to the right hospital or get a doctor that works here. Like, basically, don't come back here when you have your next baby. And I'm like, okay. But, um, so, you know, I, I'm not necessarily uh, uncomfortable with having my baby here. I would just have to, I would just have to do the, um, do my homework and find, you know, the right um, physician and all that stuff. 
um, the only thing I would be concerned about is because I, I, I had an operation when my daughter was born. So if I had to have an operation, um, a cesarean section, I mean, um, that probably would concern me a little, um, you know, surgery is a serious thing. But other than that, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty cool with it, you know. So true. I have both my girls in childcare and now I have them back home. Yeah. Yes. That part. It's, it's, yeah. It's way too expensive childcare. It's, and I feel like, like, is that some sort of population control tactic? I don't know, but it just feels like, mm, it, it feels impossible to, to live the American dream that you're supposed to be living without having all this debt and just having no money and yeah. How's Iceman says how's your house coming along? It's it's coming along great. I'm working on the video now. It's um I actually working on three videos now. I think I have month four, which was June, the progress from last month. And um so I'm trying to get that one out this week. And uh, I just had to go through and I don't want it to be too, too long, but at least we can see the process, like where we started and where we ended at the end of the month. And then, um, and then this month, it like there's progress every day just because now we're at the, a different phase. But um, hopefully uh, by no later than August, September, we, we could be close to done or be able to move in at least. That's the plan. Giselle says, I agree with your last video. Wherever our people find peace, wherever our people find peace, wherever they may be. Thank you, Giselle. Yeah, I think, um, I think, um, if it's easier for you, like people have countries that they fall in love with when they go. And I don't think it has to be an African country if if Jamaica just was like great for you or the Bahamas or you feel like at home you feel like at home in Thailand I just think that the fact that people are leaving somewhere that they don't feel comfortable that's the point like that's the major um accomplishment I guess and you know if we're all spread out then we basically got family everywhere, you know? That's how I see it anyway. Um, you know, I, I don't think that we should try to be like, I'm, I'm pro-black, I'm just pan-African, so I have to go. You don't have to. And people shouldn't feel, somebody commented like, even if you feel like it's not working, you know, you've been in Africa for a year or something and you go, to another place or you go back, like you shouldn't feel ashamed. You tried something, you did something like that nobody else in your family probably has done. So, you know, it's still an accomplishment. Yeah, whoever wants to make it will make it work. Yeah, yeah, if you tell yourself there's no option then and you gotta do it, you just gotta do it. I appreciate you and the other AA and UK YouTubers I watch. YouTube gives us all the experience, good and bad. I can tell you, despite the bad, I still want to come. That's dope. The feeling, it seems, the feeling, it seems, is beyond me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's definitely, um, somebody once said that Africa chooses you. And, um, you know. And that's what happens. It, it does. I don't know how I ended up coming here for the first time back in 09. Like, I just got exposed to it. I ate at a restaurant in New York. And it put a bug in my ear. And then a friend of mine happened to have traveled here. And she liked it. And so it made it seem less scary and less foreign. And I started looking up into it. And I was like, oh, they speak French. And I was learning French at the time. So it kind of just... And then I met my husband here. And then a year later, we got married. And I found out, the following year, I found out that I have lineage from here. So it was just like, I don't know. 
Those are one of, that's one of those things you just can't explain. Why Senegal and not Gambia? I never heard of Gambia before until until maybe a year ago, really. I never really heard of it. <laughs> um, but uh, no, take that back. I heard of it a couple of years ago because I looked at a map and I saw it. Yeah, that it was close to Senegal. But um, why I never been I never been to Gambia before. The first time I went was um, earlier this year. Uh, I went twice this year. Um, but I never knew anything about Gambia. My husband never knew anything about Gambia. So because we didn't know, we never traveled here um, on our trips to um, to Senegal. But my husband's from Senegal, so that's why I moved here. And um, yeah, that's why. That's the main reason we came somewhere that he already um, grew up and he is familiar with and I'm familiar with because I've been coming. So yeah, that's why. Gambia wasn't wasn't really on my mind because I didn't know much about it until I started seeing YouTube oh, about a year ago, um, seeing YouTubers talk about it. But I didn't know about Gambia as far as how it was there or anything to be interested in moving. I only knew about Ghana. And I had a friend who went to Ghana, and Ghana seemed like it was lit. So I probably would have thought of trying at least visiting Ghana. I was supposed to visit Rwanda, and before the pandemic, um, you know, canceled it. But I had never, I had never. But I, yeah, whenever I meet somebody who's from somewhere or, or someone who's been there, then that's what usually piques my interest as far as going to a place. So it wasn't until I saw YouTube that I was like, oh, we got to go to Gambia. It's basically the Anglophone Senegal, you know. So, let's see. I had two C-section. Eesh. Yeah. C-section, it was easy when it when when I went in for it or whatever. I was kind of disappointed because it wasn't my birth plan. And I felt like I was a failure in, in, in childbirth but for a minute there. But... Now dealing with the repercussions of it after five years, it's like I don't want to do that again. Um, I'm afraid it might mess up something, you know, because I already I still have pain, um, or at least discomfort where my incision is and stuff. So I don't know if I want to do that. And you know, in the states, it's automatic. You had one C-section. They're like, well, you're. They're gonna tell you you're this age and this and this and that, you're basically a geriatric pregnancy, and blah, blah, blah. and meanwhile here, people are having kids at 46 and nobody says boo, like, so, yeah, it's an American illusion and not a dream for many, mm -hmm. so according to them here, Nikki and B, if you have one, they tell you to continue to have them, if you have, yeah, my mom had three, c-sections because i was breech and uh and i think the umbilical cord was around my neck and so they did her and then my sisters after mm -hmm. and that caused um complications not long soon after like not soon after but years after she had a lot of scar tissue and um and had to have another surgery again um when she was, when she had just turned 50. My skin is gorgeous. Really? Thank you. I don't, I don't, I think I could do better. <laughs> but, um, it's the, it's the humidity and the weather and the sun, I think. Um, it does something to everybody's skin here. I've, I've noticed it with a lot of, um, well, local people, I, I figured they just had good skin, but a lot of my uh, African American friends, everybody's skin is like on the globe over here. I don't know. It must be the sun. We're close to the sun here, so could be that. But I think um, because of the heat and sometimes the humidity, I know humidity does good things for your skin, like because you get the impurities out and stuff. So it could be that. I also make my own face mask now that I have more time. I'm living the semi-retired life, so. I'm able to care for myself better, um, and so I'll make avocado masks with old avocados, or I'll make um, turmeric masks sometimes, because 
everything I'm trying, you know, stay within a certain budget. So I'm like, okay, I can a lot of DIY stuff. So I've been doing that and it's natural. So yeah, let's see. We got questions today. This is cool. Um, I have I had to have a C-section. Oh wait, no, I missed this. Hold on. So thank you, Mary Lou, for the compliment. Oh. I refuse to do childcare and sending my son to public school. I took care of my son and I've been homeschooling from day one, saving hubby and I money, having peace of mind. He's fourteen now. That's awesome. That's awesome. I have had, I had to have a C-section also because I have broken pelvis as a plate and screws. Wow, that's a really bad car accident. Oh no. I feel most at peace in the Caribbean, but Senegal, Gambia, and Bissau have a special place in my heart. The Caribbean, I haven't, well, yes I have. I've been to Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Haiti was, Haiti was amazing. And I think it was only, it was, what made it amazing was like, I was trying to go there for so long and then had all these fears. And then I get there and it's like, man, it's gorgeous. And the people, it's, yeah, it's, it was it was awesome going there. Um, where else have I been? The Bahamas, Trinidad, but only for short trips, not enough to like really feel the culture and stuff. But I was, if I wasn't married to Senegalese, I was planning on retiring in Panama. I go there, I used to go there every other year, or every year. Um, and I have an adopted family there. So shout out to my, my play cousins in Panama, Yami and Denise and Marcos and Georgie. Mm. The umbilical cord was wrapped in my daughter's neck twice. They just automatically did a schedule for my son wow they didn't give you a choice yeah that's the stuff that i'm scared about them not giving oh it blinked or something anyway i had a um doctor tell us that because i was induced but it wasn't like with the pitocin it was just manually and they tried to manually induce me you can look it up i don't want to you know be gory details but so it didn't work i decided to stop it had been over a day and i'm like i'm gonna go home the baby's not ready to come and they sent like three different doctors in and then they sent the head doctor in are you sure do you know your baby can die because we already started the procedure and i'm like you didn't give me any drugs you didn't you know like do anything where like there's something in my bloodstream or Whatever they're like, do you realize sign here? And they like the intimidating factor. And if it wasn't for the fact that I had my doula, my homegirl, my mom, my sisters, and my dad and my husband, like all those people in there with me, sitting around me, they probably would have tried to be more like forceful and and scare you and, and make you feel like they can control everything. And if you don't use them or their services, like you're risking everybody's health and I'm like man it's, it was just it was really sad it was it was really sad that they to realize that because you're new at this pregnancy thing that they just try to intimidate people for their own monetary or you know just to get the excitement of using a what is a scout or a, I don't know put a knife to cut you and stuff it's just crazy my sister is a midwife, her husband is. So I'll put you in touch. Okay. My mother in law is um Sash Farm too. She would she just retired, but she was Sash Farm and my and my sister in law. So I felt like I would be cool with them. I just need somebody who speaks English because I think when you get too too um how do you call it? Like an emotional or or a situation you like speaking uh, your second and third languages it's not that easy. Like you need somebody who like can react. Like if you have some pain, you gotta be able to respond quickly. So I wouldn't want a translator in that situation or, you know. Oh, cool. Yeah, the avocado mask, put some lemon in it and some honey and mix it together and put it in the refrigerator. And then 
just use that like real avocado because I was looking at my um the the avocado mask that you purchased the one that gets kind of hard on your face they used to have on all those TV shows like Married with Children and I Love Lucy anyway and the, the one that dries and I'm like it's avocado why can't I just make it and it's probably better for you because it doesn't have the extra chemicals that they add so yeah cool Haiti I want to go to Haiti and Cuba yeah Cuba was one of my one of my places and when it was an embargo thing happened I didn't get a chance to go in that window of opportunity so Panama mm, yeah cool yeah I've been to a couple of places Panama is like my second home like I really would have loved to live there uh, America's so controlling people's personal lives yeah that's rough Haiti only after a commotion from the assassination is cleared up. There's massive confusion. Yeah. Pray for Haiti, man. It's a it's a beautiful place. And they don't deserve the people are so strong. And it's really it really was empowering to be there because when you see the statues of like uh Toussaint Louverture and like I guess the pres old presidents and generals and stuff and you see their broad noses and you see their like it's just like and they're full lips and you just see it just there you don't feel colonialism colonialism like when you go to Dominican on the other side of the of the island and you go to you know uh you know Puerto Rico and like different places you feel the colonialism presence there you know but or like San Luis here up north you feel it because they name stuff after the colonizers, the schools, the building. But in Haiti, it's like, no, they're, they're so, like, they're the real deal. I, I, I'm, I'm, sometimes I get jealous that I'm not from there. <laughs> but um, anyway, I think dinner might be here. Excuse me. I know, um. My husband probably didn't want to interrupt me um, while I was doing this, but I got to eat because it's 1020. <laughs> I got to eat dinner. I have no idea what's for dinner. Um, my husband just goes and buys. We used to have a lady cook for us, but we had to always drive and pick it up and he got tired of driving back and forth. So. And she would call us at like 10 o'clock. We'd be hungry at 9 or, you know, things like that. And so we're like, uh, let's just um, do our own thing. Because cooking here takes longer. If you don't know, like, because things aren't processed. Like, in Dakar, you can find bags of onions already cut up that day. Or jalapenos or different things that kind of prep for you a little. Because life there is a little busier. But every, generally everywhere else, it's like... You got to wash your vegetables and cut your vegetables. You have to make your tomato sauce. and Unless you want to buy everything from the store, which is not the healthiest and not the most natural and also costs more. So it's like you save money eating healthy, which is actually something that is opposite from where we're from. But yeah, so I'm going to go. I might have to, depending on... Huh. what I said in this thing I might have to take it off after but we'll see I, I don't know I, I just don't like to put stuff with a negative you know cloud or whatever but but I sometimes do have to let people know because if it can help them like definitely I'll let you know what the real is but um, anyway thanks for everybody who stopped by and uh, those of you who who benefited from my last video because I just do this like this is not a business for me this is not a, you know I mean it helps me network and meet people which is awesome other than that I really just want to help other people because people help me and you know I watch their videos and I learn from them um, a lot of the people that are in Gambia I learn from them um, people in Ghana and and it motivated me and helped me and gave me like some really hard truths and and um, a lot of uh, 
knowledge that, that I needed to better prepare myself, even though I came to visit before, but better prepare myself for actually living here. And so that's what I want for other people. I just want to pay it forward. And so if anybody benefits from any of it, like that was a hard video to do because I always think about my husband and his family and like I represent them and we're together. And so anything I do, I'm like, I don't want to want to put a bad, you know, anything out there about this country and um, the culture here and everything. But there are differences that that um, we need to know and be aware of. And not everybody has to feel like, yeah, I got to go to Africa because it's a thing. And, you know, everybody came to Ghana for the year return and stuff. And it was lit. And it was like, and that's great exposure. But living is, is very different. And um, it's one thing to leave America or leave the UK. You can leave. But make sure you're not going to a place just to get away from another place. Like when people say that, when people say, oh, I don't date people from this culture because, or I date people in this culture because my own culture is la 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 la. And it's like, no, you shouldn't be with someone to avoid being with someone else. That's the wrong reason to be with this person. So just because you want to leave where you're from if i'm saying this right or clear you know let me know just because you want to leave where you're from that shouldn't be the reason you picked this place you should want to leave where you're from yes or you can leave want to leave where you're from fine leave now deciding where to go pick a place and have a reason that you're going there other than just to get away from america because you're gonna get away and then you get comfortable with not being there, but then you have other discomforts and other things that you didn't think about. You just thought about, I'm not gonna be over there. You didn't think, but I'm gonna be here and dealing with X, Y, Z. So, you know, have reasons that you actually want to go to this place. Don't just go to get away, because I think mentally, it's gonna cause you more stress when things happen because you're like oh i didn't come here for this i didn't come here for this you have to remind yourself why you came and did you have a reason for coming other than just an escape to get away because eventually that that's not gonna sustain you um when when challenges arise or or decisions need to be made so oh just come in just came in hola como estas solentrix so, I think that's how you say it, Solentrix. I think her name is Soli. But um, the DR, con okay, I'll wrap this up. The DR conversation is deep. Yes. Yeah, I noticed I noticed that in Dominican. I, I did a Dominican once, and, and it, yeah. It's, it's very different. Um, Tanika, I appreciate your honesty. Thank you, love. Thank you so much. Thanks for all your insight and info. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you, Nikki. Blessings to you, too. Thank you, Nathan. That means a lot. Well stated. Thank you so much. I love her transparency. People need truth so they can know what to expect and how to repair. We're not owed a paradise. Create the utopia where you want it. There you go. There you go. Right there. Real talk. Pacing ourselves in the planning and making sure we research. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. All right, my loves. Thank you, my people. I I really care about all of you. Thank you for um, stopping by. Actually, Deyanira. Oh, that's a pretty name. Okay. Watch it later. So I'll leave it up for you to watch it. But it might not be here for maybe it might not be here for long. <laughs> but I'll leave it up. Um, maybe till tomorrow, cause yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not a controversy person or con, you know, I have to get it out there, but some stuff should be in private. So I don't want to leave it up there too long to cause any issues. Cause I already had people coming to me today with like trolley stuff. So I don't have the energy for that. I'm like making a new life for myself and you know, but okay. They, 
Deyanira. That's pretty. Okay, good night, everybody. Bless up from Atlanta. All right, Dwayne, I'm out of here. So I'll see you guys. When I see you, next video will be the house video. Once I, the, the progress on the house. Once I am able to uh, keep, keep, uh, finish my um, editing, sorry. Cause it's quite long so it does take long to edit a whole month of footage but i definitely want you guys want to catch you guys up um to to where we are now and probably for july we'll have two videos because it's been a lot of progress um so i want to capture all that um for you guys so july might be might have two two videos for the month but um yeah so that's it i will see you guys later um black people were so dope and and um i just had to be real with y'all for at least one time and then we're gonna get right back on the on the flex and the floss and the you know having fun but uh in the progress so i love y'all and i wish y'all the best and whatever you choose to do wherever you choose to go um we'll stay connected and uh and and just keep the positiveness going all right, y'all. Talk to you later. Peace out. I gotta turn this off. I don't know. <laughs> All right, there we go. Bye now.